could really see what was going on. And, and you know, we went to the emergency room over and over and over and over. And they would be like, what are the chances you'll see a real doctor? Oh, don't worry, we got it covered. And, you know, we'd go in and we'd tell them the story about these bugs jumping in our eyes and the burns and we covered with sores and... and and the doctor, you know, we got a jar full of bugs and a magnifying glass. We're like, please look at this. And he's, he refuses to look at it. He says, you know, my, my crazy father thinks he has bugs, but it's only pus. And, and you know, it's like, come on. We go to the emergency room again. We've had stuff thrown on us, liquid thrown on us from a rooftop, and then later dripped on us from another rooftop, and it made us extremely weak. Like, we could barely move. Like, it was knocking us unconscious, and we went to the emergency room. We've been poisoned. Okay, go sit over there. They didn't take blood. They didn't take urine. Twelve hours later, they said, okay, you can leave. I mean, this happened, like, five times in a row. I just stopped going to the emergency room because they wouldn't help. Another time, I, I would go, you know, I went to the diner. Oh, that's the other thing, food. They would give us food that was horrible. It tasted like it had was made out of worms, and it was wiggling, and, and you know, and plus we'd have to wear a hat and cover it and eat it really fast so that we didn't get the bugs in it, and, and every restaurant we went to, they would serve us the same kind of crazy stuff, and, and, and I went to this one restaurant, I ordered a hamburger and french fries, and, and I walk in, and there's a guy sitting there with... gun on his waist, and he's got a laptop open, and he's got it open just long enough for me to look and see on the screen that it's me on his laptop in my room doing what I was just doing, and he closes the laptop. The owner of the restaurant asks him, where should we put him, meaning me, and the guy says, put him over there. So I'm sitting in the back, you know, it's like midnight, I'm eating in this diner, they bring me the hamburger and french fries, and it's awful, it tastes like worms, and, and, and the french fries taste like they were made out of mushed worms that were deep fried, and um, I ate like half of it, and the guy asked me, so, how is it, and I this is awful. This is the worst food I've ever had. And the other guy, he's like, the guy with the gun, he's like, oh, no, it's good. It's good food. You eat it. It gives you energy. You run around. And, and the woman, she says to him, no, I've tried it. It's horrible. And the, the restaurant owner, of course, is like, well, I'm not giving it to you for... I'm like, I have money. You know, he's like, well, I'll give you another one. I'm like, all right, thanks. And I, I couldn't even eat it. But this happened in restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. Anyway, this guy with the big gun, uh, you know, I, I go to another hospital. I go to, to uh, Bellevue Hospital. And I come in, and who's there in the emergency room waiting for me but this guy with the gun from the diner. And so I'm like, la la la, and I wait a little while, and, and I say, fuck this, they're not going to help me here. So I sneak out the back, and I go running around another half a mile down to uh, Beth Israel Hospital. And I walk in, and who's there waiting for me but this guy um, with the gun, and he's talking to this, and I'm like, all right, forget it. You know, I'm not going to get any help. Uh, another thing about doctors is I, I had a doctor in my life for like almost 20 years, Dr. Philip Baird. He was a very good doctor, general practitioner, and I would see him at the Sydney Hillman Family Health Practice, you know, every six months and have my blood levels checked because I have hepatitis, which I believe was given to me by another government program, but that's another story. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, very good guy with long-term relationship. I make an appointment to go there uh, when my fingers were all infected and when I show up they tell me there's no Dr. Baird here and I'm looking at the on the desk of the, the woman who's telling me this, the, the receptionist and the paper there on the desk and it says to all staff members from Dr. Philip Baird, head of Sydney Sydney Hillman have family practice, blah 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 signed Philip Baird. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know He's my doctor, and she said, no, he doesn't work here anymore, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I go in the back to see the other doctor, and of course his name is still on the door, Dr. Baird, and, and my 
Petra can hear him in the other room talking about some poor guy who they kept lying to and wouldn't tell her about his medical problems and wouldn't let him get any help and how horrible it was. Uh, anyway, I let this crazy lady lance my finger and, and um, the other thing they would do is they would always include in their conversation stuff that you had said like earlier in the day, something that you would remember and they would mention it to you to let you know that they were in on the secret or whatever, unless they were being mind controlled too and being fed these things, you know, because they can literally put thoughts in your head and make you think it's your own mind. I know this sounds insane. I know it sounds like the ramblings of a madman. And believe me, if, if one of you people had told me this story five years ago, I would have said, okay, well, you know, maybe, but uh, maybe there's something wrong with you. Um, this is the truth, man. This is the God's honest truth. And, and it's time for people to wake up and believe this, you know. I, I'm going to lose my life. I know this, and they tell me over and over, we're going to kill you, we're going to kill you, why don't you kill yourself, da 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 and, and I've had such a hard time making videos that actually make any sense that, that anybody, you know, because the other videos I made were like a desperate attempt of somebody so dosed out on MK Ultra LSD that I didn't know which way was up, and I thought I was okay, which is the weirdest thing, you know, so I'm trying to document, oh, I had videos of these things shooting out of my head, but they, they put water in the phone and they took the video card out and, then, you know, um, that happened a lot of times. They wouldn't let us get on the internet for like eight months. It was impossible no matter where I went, Starbucks, McDonald's, it didn't matter. Even one of those little kiosks where you rent the internet thing, I could not get online. Um, my friends stopped talking to me. My parents told me I was crazy. Um, you know, it took a lot a lot to convince people that I wasn't insane, you know, I had these people called the wolf pack following me around, throwing stuff at me, and, and, you know, there's ways you can prove people are following you, you know, you double back, you flip around, you go up the stairs, you go back down, you go underneath the subway, you come up, you go in, you go around, you go in the bus, you get out the back door, and they're all going, where's he going, which way is he going, and it's quite obvious, somebody's fucking following you, you know, um, that's easy enough to figure out, but, there was just so many crazy things that the, the black powdery dust that moved the walls and moved the bed it was in our teeth too that's another thing as soon as they started with this stuff our teeth started rotting out Patrick's teeth her old front teeth all cracked and fell out then her other teeth and she had those fixed and the other teeth fell out she had those fixed and the bottom ones fell out again she had those fixed now these other ones have fallen out that my teeth as soon as I moved in the hotel, I noticed they started turning black and cracking and falling out. I, I've lost a whole bunch of teeth back here. I can only chew on one side. My teeth are, are you know, no matter how much dental care, she, she flush, brush and floss and water pick after every meal. And, and, and you know, I try to brush my teeth and it, it's just something, this, this nano dust, whatever. There was also bugs that would attach to your teeth like little barnacles. And, couldn't even scrape them off with like a, a, a knife. It was crazy. I had these pictures of me with these little tiny bugs all over my eyelashes and, and in my nose and my mouth. And anyway, this crazy dust that's all in our mouths and our teeth would they, they could wiggle the walls. Well, they could wiggle our teeth around in our heads. And, and Pedro would be screaming in pain day after day. They'd be wiggling rah, 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 and giving me migraine headaches. And, and I would go in the bathroom and look in the mirror. Ah! And I see my teeth are wiggling, you know, and I'm trying to videotape it. And they're like rah, 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 moving around. Uh, we watched the dust. Uh, literally, you could wrestle with wires. Like the, they could coat this wire and dust and go woo, 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 as though it were a snake or something alive and you'd wrestle with this thing they used it to pull out the plugs on the computers you know i'd plug it back in and i'd be there boom they'd pull it out i'd plug it back in boom they'd pull it out i'd plug it in boom they'd pull it out you know uh i, I would set up video surveillance in the room with with, with uh, motion detectors and cameras and they would just turn it off there was time